if you missed yesterday's episode, this is nothing more than just a what if hypothetical scenario. Just wanted to give you guys that quick disclaimer. If you missed yesterday's episode, let's continue on with today's show. Guess who's back? Back again. Jake's back. Tell a friend. I know I did that when Jersey Joe returned for our part two crossover. I couldn't think of anything else clever to say. But nonetheless, Jake is back to discuss more Matthew Kachuk and also reflect on the free agency period for the New Jersey Devils. And I also ask him if free agency were to end today and the season were to start tomorrow for New Jersey, what would you give Tom Fitzgerald? You're going to hear his answer on today's episode of Locked on Devils. So much to discuss. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. Alrighty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils Podcast here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, play by play announcer, and also Devils Drive for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. Um, like I said in the cold open and also in yesterday's episode, I did a two part crossover with Jake Wakely of Raising Hell in New Jersey. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes the NHL is too quick for my own liking because Matthew Kachuk was traded to the Florida Panthers recently and I'm on vacation, so there's not really much I can do. But uh, just think of these episodes as like, what if, like, what could have happened? And they were before, like, the trade became official. So I apologize for that. But like I said, I'm on vacation. There's not really much I can do. So I hope you guys do enjoy this episode. And just think of it as like a Disney plus Marvel kind of what if kind of scenario. Silly season, guys. And sometimes silly season can happen even if something is already taking place so there's a first time for everything so hopefully you guys enjoy today's episode and here's part two with jake wakely take it away okay so basically we've established that we both want matthew kachuk now i gotta ask you this question do you think it's likely that the new jersey devils can land him despite being the front runners in the betonline.net sweepstakes I'll say yeah because of the cap space situation, and that's and you know the presenting the ability to play with the Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes for the next eight years of your career. Now you're, I'm gonna get into this a little bit. I had just, I actually just forwarded this to you. Um, now it's don't know if it's true or not. I gotta ask a friend of mine if if it was true or not. But so I'm gonna read a bit of the. Devil's thing out here for Kachuk, and then we'll kind of. This might be able to tell you if they're going to be front runners or not. So during day one of the, Elliot Friedman apparently said this. I'm going to look into this after and see if he actually did, and then I'll confirm it. But during day one of the draft, the Flames were contacted by the Devils, who proposed a trade offer of Matthew Kachuk being Kachuk to New Jersey for pick two and pick 198. Calgary would say no to this deal at this point, still believing that Goudreau and Kachuk would be here next season on long-term deals. However, this deal came so close to fruition that social media teams around the sports world had thank you, Matthew, trade graphics prepared to be posted on Twitter, Instagram, etc. However, he did in fact inform the team that he will not be signing long-term and the Flames have receive trade offers for him from St. Louis and again, New Jersey. They are not the same offer that are being reported on social medias. Long story short, you can expect him gone rather sooner than later, almost certainly before next week, expect him return for him. Top six forward, solid prospect, top 20 pick. See, that's what people are saying that he's going to be gone within a week. And I really hope that's not the, I really hope that's not the case because I'm going on vacation next week. So I would hate to have to like, you know, stop in the middle of my vacation and record like an emergency episode, but you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But yeah, like Ryan Novozinski said in his, um, in his interview on my show, he said those trade discussions were mostly tire kickers and I, if I were the Flames, that's just poor business right there because Johnny Goodrill already had one foot out the door. Even I knew that. And I'm not a GM. 
Like if he wanted yeah. to sign his extension, he would have done so by now. I said this in a hypothetical trade scenario, silly season episode. I said, if Johnny Goodrow wants to return to the Calgary Flames, he could have done it weeks ago and just gotten out the way. He would have been one of the more paid uh, Calgary Flames players in history. Or at that moment, I think he would have been the most paid player in Calgary Flames history. I don't know which uh, avenue it was down, but still, it's just like Johnny Goodrow could have taken care of that long ago, but he didn't. So it's just like, that's just poor planning by the Calgary Flames. And then for Matthew Kachuk, it's just like, if he sees his buddy go, why would he want to stick around in Calgary? I think he would want to go somewhere else. Now, here's what I'm hoping uh, for. I hope that um, I hope that Tom Fitzgerald is tampering right now, tampering behind the back of the NHL because this is his family member. So he has the right to talk to his family member. He's just like, hey, look, cuz, l- l- listen to me. You want to come to New Jersey. You want to come and play with Jack Hughes. You want to play with Nico Heischer. We're on the come up. We got more veterans. We're no longer the youngest team in the NHL. We need you to take our organization to the next level. So I am hoping that Tom Fitzgerald is tampering the hell out of the NHL right now, just because this is his family member. And you really can't say you you can't talk to family because as Vin Diesel said, family is first family is important. Family is forever. So it's just like, um, it's just like, I hope that's what Tom Fitzgerald is doing. And that's what I'm holding out for him. Like maybe Tom Fitzgerald can actually speak one-on-one with this family member and just be like, look, would you like to come to New Jersey? Because we'll do whatever it takes to get you here. Now, in regards to that hypothetical trade scenario, would you be okay with it? Giving up the second overall pick for um, Matthew Kachuk? Yeah, I, I would, I would have been okay with it. Like, yeah, I mean, I think that, I think like, that, I think that's a no brainer. I think that's, yeah, like, I just I think had every Devils fan said, we'll give up the second overall pick for Matthew Kachuk. Like, yeah, that's what all that's what all the fans were essentially saying. Do not trade that second overall pick unless it is for Matthew Kachuk. Because I was like, don't do it for Fiala. Don't do it for Debrinket. Would love to have either one of those players join the organization. But hold out for Matthew Kachuk or Johnny Goodrow for one of those Calgary Flames players. Do you honestly think a trade is going to get done within a week or two? Because that seems really fast to move on something like this, especially with something that's you know, developing so quick, something that's so major, something that can shape shift an organization. It feels like they would take their time with this because, um, you know, I'm not sure who has more leverage in this situation, but doesn't like Matthew Kachuk, like, I don't know how the contract situation is working. Doesn't he have like a no trade clause or something like that? No movement clause. I don't, yeah, I don't know how the thought works for him, but I know his arbitration date is the 11th of August, so we're going to have a resolution one way or the other here in the next couple weeks. So, And it, it was just kind of odd. Like, I know, so, you know, Miles Wood, you know, he could be included. You never know. But it just seemed funny that Bratt's date was the third and then Kachuk's was the 11th, and it was just kind of like, tied in between maybe i'm looking too much into it i don't know but i think for brat i can they do a sign and trade like can the devils just sign him well, and then- that's 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 the that's the whole thing here with kachuk is kachuk wants to go when he gets traded he's agreeing to be traded to that team and they sign him to an eight-year extension so he will only get traded to the team that's signing him to an eight-year extension and where he wants to sign. Man, it just seems like, I, I've heard this phrase, if, if it sounds too good to be true, usually it is. Like, I feel like the Devils are in the driver's seat and it's all on their shoulders and hopefully not another wild card team swoops in and just, you know, tries to pick them up. But here's a situation where the field is once again limited because there's only a, a, a few amount of teams that are able, like actually able to sign Matthew Kachuk long-term because the Vegas Golden Knights are going to have to break open the bank. They're going to have to tip it over if they want to get his services. So it's just like, it's just, I don't know. It's just like, it sounds too good to be true. And I would love to have Matthew Kachuk on the roster. It's just like a matter of like, how is this going to work? How, how's this arbitration going to you know go out? Because I said it on my show, arbitrations are just a huge headache on both sides that nobody wants to deal with, which is why, Rarely when an arbitration is filed, rarely does it get to the hearing. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's interesting and I'm going to, 
I'm gonna do some uh, GM work here. Are you sleuthing oh. again? What's that? Are you sleuthing again? Like, are you are you scouting again? Yeah, I uh, I am. Yeah, I'm trying to figure some stuff out on the Kachuk thing. So. Well, I can say one thing. It's just like I guess this is the deal. This is a deal for the New Jersey Devils to lose. And when this episode goes live, who knows? Maybe Matthew Kachuk will already be uh, on his way out somewhere because this can happen at any given date, which is why I wanted to do this episode with you. ASAP also did a, a, a two-parter with Jersey Joe, talked with Christy Flannery because I'm just like, I want to be prepared in case something does go down and I can make an episode about it ASAP, if, if you know what I mean. And I really hope Matthew Kachuk um, does get traded to the Devils. Otherwise, my colleagues are never going to let me hear the end of it. Now, my question for you, Trey, here is, like, they <laughs> – I understand Brad Trivling, you know, he had to, he had to try and sign Johnny Goudreau and like, I get it. Like, you know, he's a star player, but like, you're not questioning yourself now for not taking that second overall pick. Like you had to know the writing was on the wall for Goudreau. Like I knew it a year ago when they didn't sign him in the summer and he didn't want to talk an extension during the season. That right there is like, a, is the answer right there. They're not coming back. They don't want to talk during the season. They're not coming back. See, so it, I don't know what was going through their mind. I, I thought that – I think their mentality was like, look, we're going to offer him this big deal, an offer that he can't refuse. We're putting out the red carpet for him. We're going to make our pitch to him. I don't know. See, I don't know. I guess they just didn't want to, like, jump the gun on, on anything. And quite honestly, I don't know what the circumstances are because I try to usually give the benefit of the doubt to the GM because obviously you and I have no – sort of business in that sort of aspect we're just armchair gms and we can only make assumptions but like the you're right the writing did have to be on the wall for johnny goodrow it's just like you, you didn't anticipate for him to leave like he, he literally says that like he could have signed his contract early on that's my thing like he literally could have and what happened so and he walked he walked and you got nothing and now this is why uh, the the Calgary Flames did the arbitration for uh, Matthew Kachuk because they don't want Matthew Kachuk to walk away um, in free agency next year for essentially nothing. Because if, um, if if he does accept his qualifying offer or something like that, or if, if I, I don't know what the circumstance was, but basically there was a scenario where he wouldn't be able to negotiate a contract until January 1st, 2023. But long story short, if uh, Matthew Kachuk were to return to the Calgary Flames, he would be an unrestricted free agent next season. Don't want to take that risk of him walking away for essentially nothing. And now your organization is, is basically screwed. So, yeah, exactly. So, you know, will it happen? I'd say unlikely, but it could. That That's my yeah, thing. Like I'm, I'm putting it at like a, a 60 40 that it's not going to happen like more so in favor it's not going to happen but i'm going to give it that little bit of a chance just to just I because i'm a fan and i want to keep my hopes up and i just want to see tom fitzgerald pull the trigger on a hockey blockbuster trade and i've said this before every off season he uses free agency to add players to this team now understandable because we don't know what the value is of the devil's roster because they're so young but do you not sometimes ask yourself, Trey, as a Devils fan, is Tom Fitzgerald afraid to make the big move, like the trade? Is he afraid to pull the trigger? I think, a- I think he is, just given how short of a leash the Devils have in terms of patience. So if he really screws up, then you know what's going to happen. He's going to be fired. I've, I've said it in some of my Silly Season episodes when I talk about a big trade, which is this is a move that could get Tom Fitzgerald fired if it blows up. Exactly. So I think Tom Fitzgerald is just trying to play it safe and hopefully he's just hoping he's living on a prayer that someone is able to take it to the next level. That was Jack Hughes last year. No answers or buts about it. But I think the, I think to answer your question, I would say so. Yes. 
what's up guys before we continue today's episode with jake i want to bring you guys the first and second library this morning and the first one comes from our friends at built bar so from the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift for your taste buds you've probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk built bar but guess what your friends at built have given coconut brownie chunk the puff treatment that's right the coconut brownie chunk built bar flavors you love in a delicious chewy marshmallow covered in 100 real chocolate it's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness but stop drooling and listen, they are good for you. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all delicious. Coconut brownie chunk puffs are only here for a limited time, so don't miss out. They are going like hotcakes because they taste amazing. All Bill Bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. The best part about Bill Puffs, of course, is that they taste amazing, but you can enjoy them guilt-free because they are actually good for you. They are the perfect treat, perfect when you've got a craving, you need to satisfy your sweet tooth, or if you need a quick, healthy snack. And they are an excellent source of protein. Delicious coconut, rich, sweet brownie, creamy marshmallow. Stop fantasizing. Get to Built.com and order your box of coconut brownie chunk Bill Puffs right now. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 50% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And now the second live read comes from our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, NASCAR, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sport wagering information from live in-game betting sources and podcasts. That they have everything you, you possibly can want. Head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the actions happening right now. BetOnline, where the game starts. Please remember to gamble responsibly and visit our friends at Locked On Bets for all your betting needs there as well. Okay, let's get back to our discussion with Jake. Take it away once again. But what, would you like, do, what would you do when you're on vacation if you got the update that Matthew Kachuk had been traded to the Devils? I'm going to have to be like, family, I love you and all. I got to get back to the hotel, record a quick episode. Hopefully the hotel Wi-Fi uh, holds up uh, when I do my video. But it's just like, love you and all, but I got to go and record an episode. So th- that's my overall thing. But um, two steps ahead. So we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. And I, I don't know how quick it's going to happen. That's my overall thing. I don't want, like I said, I don't want to jump the gun on anything. I know reports are saying that it's going to happen within a week, two weeks, but I'm just like, usually these things take time, especially for a big name player like Matthew Kachuk. But the one thing I want people to keep in mind is like, look what Jack Eichel was traded for. Look what Alex DeBrinkett was traded for. I think Kevin Fiala, the asking price was in that same ballpark or something like that. Or look at when we obtained P.K. Subban and we gave the Predators basically just a couple prospects that didn't really, I, I don't believe, amounted to anything really that much. So it's just like, and people were saying that the Devils won the trade for P.K. Subban. So it's just like, keep this in mind. Usually uh, trades aren't eye, an eye for an eye. They're not an arm for an arm. Usually one team is more lopsided than the other when it comes to trade scenarios, but the other team is banking on that maybe these young prospects, this draft pick can pan out into something special. It might take years and people might forget about it, but that's what people are just basically banking on. So Jake, I want to, I want to move on and talk more about like what we got right now. So if you had to rate the devil's off season, if it were to end today, what would you rate it? What would you give Tom Fitzgerald for signing some of these uh, veteran players? I'd give him a solid B. That seems like what everyone is saying. Like I asked the same question to Joe's Joe. I asked the same question to Christy Flannery. It was just like, what would you give the off season? P- Christy Flannery, I think, gave an A. I think uh, Jersey Joe gave a B. So it seems like the offseason would still be somewhat successful for the Devils, even if they don't get a big-name player. Yeah, I think – I only say a B because he wasn't able to get Goudreau. Would it make if, if he's able to get Kachuk, then we'll give him an A+. Do you think Vitek Vanacek is the answer that the Devils are looking for? Not a chance in hell. Not a chance. Just the safest option. Yeah, not a chance. I mean, I did a silly season episode about Big Tech Vanacek. I said he was the more realistic option because, you know, I don't think we were going to get Darcy Kemper. Um, I did not want Braden Holtby. And I said Billy Huso could also be a possibility. But if I had to pick between Huso and, and Vanacek, I said I would choose Vanacek. So, yeah, and Vanacek, Vanacek's a really good goalie. He just, 
you know, it's just going to be, how does he do with more playing time and stuff like that? But, you know, if Vanacek can play well and it pushes Blackwood and he plays better, then, you know, we're in a good spot because we definitely don't have trouble scoring goals. We just got to keep them out of our own net. Yeah, we can't score six goals and they give up seven in the process. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think, yeah, it was the what was it, the one game against Florida. We were winning 6-2 in the third period, like 13 minutes left, yeah. and we lost 7-6, and I was just like, oh, it's I just – my wife's like, what happened? I'm like, oh, they were winning 6-2, but they lost. <laughs> can't scoring – six, scoring six goals is significant. That's great. You, you should can't. win almost every game. I know, like – the Devils had good offense, but they couldn't stop anyone. No, and it was like there was, um, you know, I'm getting a little bit off topic here a bit, but there was that one game last year against Boston. In Boston, it was two to one for Boston. And I, it was the intermission. I went to take a shower, and I come back out, and it was 7-1. I'm like, what I was the in New hell? Orleans with that. I was in New Orleans when that happened. I'm glad I did not watch that. And I'm like, what, what just happened? They and just, then I'm, she's like, are you good? I'm like, no. Why do I keep putting myself through this with this team? It's a love and hate relationship. At least you don't make a press conference and say that you quit on this organization. That 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 guy who posted on social media, what a bum. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. Like, and you know what? Like, the best way to say it for every fan is to, you had to have seen this coming. As soon as Brodeur retired, the Devils were going downhill. It was so obvious it was coming. We just didn't think it would take 10 plus years for this to happen. Yeah, we tried rushing, didn't work. So it's just like, we got to, when you rush the process, you extend it actually. Yeah. So that's just my only warning towards the devil's organization. So uh, final question for you, Andre Pilat, is he going to be the one? Is he that X factor that the devils have been looking for is he going to be that guy to basically assert himself for a new jersey devils uh as opposed to what like is he going to be like a game See, breaker who's the, leader, or who's the leader on the devils organization that's my question it's like no offense to nico keisha no offense to jack hughes no offense to jesper brad but who's the one who knows how to you know basically position everyone into the correct format who's the person who's basically saying like look we're on a so-and-so losing streak. I'm going to take it upon my shoulders to come up clutch and actually lead us out of this rut. Um, who's the guy who's actually won something on our roster? Not like P.K. Subban, who went to the Stanley Cup Finals, some, or not someone like Dougie Hamilton, who's made playoff runs, but someone who's actually went won something twice, back-to-back, and went to three straight finals. Yeah, it, it would definitely be Andre Plot. It's just... It's so uh, just what he's done. He, he knows what it takes to win and lose when you're down in a series, how to get the boys going in the dressing room, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, he's not the most vocal guy, but he'll, I feel like he'll just pull some guys aside and say, Hey, listen, you know, keep your head up. You're going to get your chance and you know, it's going to come and you'll get rewarded. So, you know, we saw that, we saw that in 2000 when the Devils won their cup in, against Dallas. John Madden had that shorthanded chance that he missed. Come back to the bench and, you know, guys like Breland really, who have been there and McGillney are just like, hey, like, Steven's like, hey, you'll get your chance again, kid. Like, it's coming. Danico, same thing. Next shift, John Madden goes out and he scores a shorthanded goal. The Devils go on to win the Stanley Cup that game. So it's little things like that go a long way. And I think Palat will bring that leadership to uh, – to New Jersey. I don't like his contract. I'm going to get that out of the way now. I do not yeah, like the contract. It, it, okay, look. Andre Pillai and his camp were basically like just saying to the Devils, like, we know you want Johnny Goodrow, and you, we know you struck out with them. You better pay us just a little bit more so that way we can actually come and join you because you don't want to sh- miss on your second option, do you? So basically, the Devils had no choice. It was that or go to option C, D, E, and so on. Yeah, and I, I'm glad it was – like, I, I love the Andre Pilat signing. I just don't like the uh, years and the money. Yeah, I think a, a lot of us can attest to that. But it is what it is, and what happens, happens. But, uh, Jake, before we wrap up, uh, any final thoughts, my man? 
Uh, no, just, you know, it's been a fun off season for the Devils. Uh, once again, it's an, I've enjoyed talking with you. I'm sure we're going to do this again at some point this summer before the season gets going here. Um, you know, preseason will be around the corner here soon. And um, you can follow me at Wakes3019 on Twitter and check out my podcast, uh, Raising Hell in Jersey. I'll be doing uh, some episodes here next week while the wife and daughter are gone on vacation. And um, yeah, so, and follow, um, quick shout out to my guy, Jim Berger at Jim Berger on Twitter. Uh, give him a follow uh, if you haven't already. Uh, great hockey uh, writer. Um, definitely a guy who has some inside knowledge and, you know, he hasn't got the credit he deserved yet, but it's definitely coming for him. We all love Jim and support the work that he's doing, hard work he puts in every day to put out uh, Devils and NHL content for all the fans. So, you know, other than that, uh, no, uh, I think the Devils uh, definitely heading in the right direction and, Hopefully they can swing for the fences and get a Matthew Kachuk. Well, right now we've been striking out. So fingers crossed, everybody. Uh, don't get your hopes up, but usually good things come to those who least expect it. So ask the Columbus Blue Jackets. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Jake, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to do this. And uh, like I say on every show, continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. Catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.